Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on air and combustion and we are going to be looking at the applications of um, uh, competition for oxygen that is on the metals and also we are going to conclude on the applications and uses of oxygen and also pollution. Initially we were discussing on competition of metals uh, in, for oxygen and we looked at how different metals are able to take away oxygen of other metal oxides in regards to their reactivity and where they are placed in the reactivity series. So how can we apply this knowledge that we learn on competition for oxygen in our daily life? Uh, so one of the ways that uh, competition for oxygen is used is in the extraction of metals so we are going to discuss the extraction of metals in details in form form. So what happens is ores of metals, especially the ones that are low in the reactivity series like zinc, iron and lead, they are usually roasted in air to form their oxides. And then these oxides are reduced by common reducing agents. And the common reducing agents used in these processes is carbon and carbon to oxide. So you will discuss in detail these reactions of how this metal oxide are actually reduced by this reducing agent. We also know that uh, the composition of air of the percentage is greatly being affected by pollution. And this pollution occurs as a result of different human activities. Some of those human activities that have altered the composition of air is one of them is mining. Mining happens when there's, uh, it exposes the air to a lot of dust particles. We also have geothermal power. So in the ge geothermal powers, um, uh, in the geothermal power station, there is emission of a lot of gases and that some common gases are very toxic to the environment like hydrogen sulfide and sulfur 4 oxide. We know sulfur 4 oxide react with water to form an acidic uh, composition or solution. This causes acid rain which falls on iron sheets or uh, even on the soil or in the water and it also affects those living organisms and also rusting. We also have industrial processes like manufacturing. So many industries usually release a lot of gases into the atmosphere. And the most common gases that cause pollution are sulfur oxide and oxides of nitrogen. This is because they usually form acid rain with water, which can fall on metal surfaces and cause rusting and also interfere with the environment um, and the animals that uh, live in that environment. And next, we are going to look at the uses of oxygen. This is the last bit of uh, this topic. Uh, and this the most common question you get is, state the industrial use of oxygen or commercial uses of oxygen. It is important to remember that you have to mention the uses that are related to production or getting a source of money. So those are the uses that you mentioned, uh, you mentioned in your answers. So one of the uses of oxygen is that it is used for breathing in hospitals for patients with breathing difficulties. So you see those are people who have issues with bringing, breathing being um, put on gas masks and these masks are usually um, attached to oxygen tanks. And then uh, it is used in breathing by mountain climbers and this deep sea divers. And uh, this happens because of the low concentration of oxygen in those regions. So it helps them to breathe. It is also used uh, to burn fuels. And these fuels are usually used to propel rockets. Previously, we said hydrogen also is used um, to make uh, fuel for propelling rocks as well. And then it is also used uh, in the manufacture of um, a flame. We call it oxyacetylene. This is formed by the mixture of oxygen and acetylene. It's very hot and it is used for welding and cutting metals. 
It is also used in steel making uh, where oxygen is usually blown through an impure iron and then the oxygen reacts with any impurities that are in the iron uh, which now are, are able to be removed. Going back into the welding, another uh, a hot flame that is produced is when oxygen is mixed with hydrogen. It forms a very hot flame. This flame also is used for welding. So apart from this, you can also use that one as a use. Next, we are going to look at uh, the end of topic, a few questions in regards to the, what we have been discussing so that we can be able to stamp uh, the things that we have learned so far. So the first question, uh, a piece of phosphorus was burnt in excess air. The key word there is excess. The amount of hot water to make a solution. So this phosphorus is burnt in here and then the product is usually dissolved in hot water and then it makes a solution. So the first question is write an equation for burning phosphorus in excess air. So we said Phosphorus can burn in limited amount of air and in excess air. If it burns in excess air, it forms phosphorus 5 oxide. If it burns in limited air, it forms phosphorus 3 oxide. So the equation we are writing is for phosphorus 5 oxide. So let's write that. This is usually a uh, white film. Then the next question is the solution obtained in above was found to have a pH of 2. Give a reason for this observation. So when you take the product which is phosphorus 5 oxide and you dissolve in water, it's going to form phosphoric acid. This is the acid that has a pH of 2. It means it's a very strong acid. So let's go to the next question. A fractional distillation of liquid air usually produces nitrogen and oxygen as a major byproduct. Name one substance that is used to remove carbon dioxide from air before it is changed into a liquid. So we said you can use either concentrated sodium hydroxide or concentrated potassium hydroxide. Uh, next question is candle wax is mainly a compound consisting of two elements. Name those two elements. So this is a bit slightly uh, when it comes to what we have been discussing. But the two elements are usually uh, hydrogen and carbon. It is an hydrocarbon. So check out more questions at the end of uh, in, the, in the site. You're going to get more also practice. Make sure you also practice more on what we have, been learned, we have learned. I hope uh, that was clear. Uh, so see you in the next session.